Welcome to this week's unit, which is about routing. The basic question that we're going to be uh, thinking about this week is how do we deliver packets from A to B across a large network like the internet? In all the units so far, we've actually been making an implicit assumption that we know that packets will be delivered to their eventual destination without having to worry about how that happens. So in this week, we're going to be looking at the various algorithms and techniques that we use and the sort of the standard protocols that people use in their networks for routing packets. So one obvious place to start or one obvious question to ask is why don't the packets actually carry a list of the routers that they, the packet should visit along the way? After all, the source could simply populate the header of the packet with a list of the routers, and then each router in turn could just look at that list and then send it on to the next hop. That would work fine, and it's called source routing. And in fact, the internet allows this as a special mode, but it's not used in practice. In fact, some parts of the internet don't allow it at all. The reason that we don't do that is because we don't really want to load the, the decision and all that information about the topology on the end host. We want the network to do it for us. And that was the design choice for the internet. And it's a very common choice in packet switch networks. So the way that the internet does this, as you probably know, is the routers contain forwarding tables and the forwarding tables have forwarding rules in them, including things like if I see a packet going to this prefix, then send it out of this port. And so the question then is how do these forwarding tables get populated? And that's going to be the topic of most of this week's lectures. The, 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 the original algorithm that was used was a distributed algorithm called the Bellman Ford algorithm. And we'll be learning about this one first. This has been replaced more or less by a, an algorithm called the shortest path first algorithm originally invented by Dijkstra. And this is a centralized algorithm where each of the routers figures out the topology and then figures out the path that its packets will take. Now, what they're actually doing, both the Bellman Ford and Dijkstra's algorithm is identifying a spanning tree. And we use spanning trees. You'll be seeing spanning trees a lot during this unit. Spanning because it spans all of the destinations, meaning the tree will allow you to reach all of them, and a tree because it has no loops. So what these algorithms do is they build a spanning tree rooted at the destination, and then packets just jump onto the tree in order to be able to find their way to the destination. So you'll be seeing about a lot about spanning trees uh, during, this, during this week. Now, the internet routing is done in a hierarchical fashion. Local, local autonomous systems like Stanford or Berkeley or Google or Hewlett Packard, they, they have their own internal routing policies where they decide what routing algorithm they're going to use. For example, at Stanford, we use an algorithm called OSPF, which is a standardized version of Dijkstra's algorithm. That's, in fact, the, 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 the algorithm that most uh, most universities and most enterprises use today. It's an, an example of what's called a stub autonomous system, which means that we just connect our own users to the public internet. We don't carry transit traffic for others. Whereas internet service providers are transit autonomous systems. They transit traffic between them, both between their users and the public internet, but also they'll carry traffic for other ISPs as it passes through as well. Now, all of the autonomous systems, they have a requirement for how they talk to each other. There is a routing protocol at the sort of the top level of the internet. There's a routing protocol called BGP or Border Gateway Protocol. We'll be learning about that this, this week. And the internet has a requirement that all autonomous systems must communicate with each other using BGP. It is the standard routing protocol of the internet. So just to recap, it's a hierarchy. We have stub A autonomous systems at the edge, which are only connected to the, to the leaves. And then there are transit ASs, which interconnect these stubs and carry traffic between them in order to deliver between sets of end users. Within each autonomous system, you can choose your own routing algorithm, and then all of the autonomous systems must talk to each other using the, bound, the border gateway protocol. Okay, well, that's it for now. We're gonna get stuck into the videos, but by the end of this unit, you're gonna know not only about the basic techniques of routing, but also how routing is done in the internet.